This video is dedicated to two different types of people. One, you're either not an entrepreneur, and I'm going to make a case why you ought to become an entrepreneur. And two, you may be an entrepreneur and you forgot why you became an entrepreneur in the first place. So let's get right into it. 26 reasons why you ought to become an entrepreneur. Number one, let me tell you number one, in no specific order. Number one is the unknown. There is some exciting about becoming an entrepreneur because every day there's an unknown. What's going to happen with this? What if this takes place? What if that takes place? And it needs to prepare you for a certain thing. You need to bring out a certain side of you that you've never seen before. That's the unknown. The unknown part brings out a certain unpredictable side of you that you can only see if you're an entrepreneur. When you're an employee, you know, it's pretty much, hey, we're doing this unless if you're in an environment that's constantly grown. For the most part, most people, it's every day. It's the same exact thing. So number one is unknown. Number two, constantly having to meet a newer, better version of yourself. So think about this. Think about your 30 years old watching this. If you're an entrepreneur and you don't recreate yourself every 90 days, you ain't going to make it as an entrepreneur. You're going to get crushed by somebody else. If you ain't constantly improving yourself, you're going to get hammered by somebody else. So the great thing about becoming an entrepreneur and you're 30 Imagine where you're going to be at 31. That's exciting. Imagine where you're going to be at 32, at 33, 34. My God, 40, 45, 48, 50. Man, how am I going to be at 50? You may be watching this. You're 17. How will you be at 22? How will you be at 27, at 29? That is the exciting part of seeing a better version of you. It's so, it's like a... It's like an award-winning movie you're watching that every time I'm going to meet a new character, but the entire character is who? You. Number three, freedom. You have a freedom to do a lot of different things. Freedom is a big part of it. Uh, uh, most people don't have the freedom that they want when you have a job. The freedom could be what? As much money as you want to make. Freedom to travel, see the world. Freedom to where you want to live, zip code, all this other stuff. It's freedom. Number four, it's the greatest game you'll ever play. So if you're watching this and saying, I love video games. Yeah, for some people, I love video games. If you want, you I love board games. You know, what were some of the board games we played? Monopoly, what else yes. is there? Chess, Chess. or, or uh, the game, what's the life, the board game? Wasn't there a game? Yeah. Life. life or Clue was another, another one. It's Clue or Monopoly. what? Monopoly. I mean, these things are games because it's like, how can I win in this game? Becoming an entrepreneur is the greatest board game you'll ever play. Let me tell you. There's not a better board game than being an I Mark my words. There's not a better board game than becoming an entrepreneur because it's a game you're playing. There's a score, there's excitement, there's strategies, there's team partnership, collaboration. It's, it's exciting when you're, when you're running a, a game for the rest of your life. And can you imagine you play a game for 50 more years? That's becoming an entrepreneur. Five, no politics. When I say no politics is, look, no matter what you ever do, there's going to be some level of politics. But in the world of business as an entrepreneur, if you kind of want to do what you want to do, there's a lot of things you can do. You have flexibility. Now, is it smart to kind of go around and telling everybody off all the time? Of course not. Then you're not creating synergistic relationships. But you don't have the politics of, I better do this before I move up and I have to kiss his butt before I move up. There is none of that going on in the world of entrepreneurship. Number six, get paid what you're worth. What do you want to make? You're going to get paid. By the way, if you're an entrepreneur and you're saying, well, you know, I only make $30,000 a year as an entrepreneur. That's what you're worth today based on your effort, improvement, progress, innovation, thinking, creativity, work ethic, all of that stuff. If you're an entrepreneur making $2 million a year right now, guess what you're worth? You are worth $2 million a year as an entrepreneur. Number seven, you're fireproof. What's fireproof? No one can fire you. The only people that can fire you are your customers and your employees. But everybody else, no one can come and say, you're fired today. No, nope, you can't get fired. There's no one that can fire you. You're fireproof. Number eight, happiness. Generally, you meet bitter people. Bitter people are simply coming from a state of not improving. If somebody doesn't improve, they're bitter. You meet happy people, they're typically improving and they're typically creating. Bitter people don't improve, don't create. Happy people improve and create. There's a certain level of high you get when you're improving and you're creating. Happiness comes from that. You know, a lot of people say, my gosh, why are entrepreneurs so fired up and energized? You go try to create and improve and see what happens to you. You'll be very happy as well yourself. Number nine, you don't have to be a genius. Uh, you know, you do not have to be a genius to make it as an entrepreneur. Why? You can always recruit geniuses. You can always recruit people that are 10 times smarter than you. 
Sometimes in the corporate world, you have to be a genius to move up, or you have to do a lot of things to move up, and all these fancy, all these other... You don't have to worry about it as an entrepreneur. You can simply be a very good recruiter of genius minds, and then that helps you grow as an entrepreneur. Next, number 10, it's the closest thing you'll play to sports. So if you love sports, and you're a person that loves your football or baseball or basketball or swimming or soccer or hockey, whatever it is, and you played high school football or high school basketball, college maybe, or even professional for some of you guys that are pro sports that you follow me and we talk about it all the time. And afterwards, if you play competitive sports and that part is missing, man, it's as if a part of you died. Literally. It's as if a part of you died. If you played sports and there's no more sports of competition, it's the sports of business. Similar things take some place. Practice, putting a team together, competition, leaders, both stats, showing up early, leaving late, hitting the weights, all of that is combined together because the closest thing you play to sports. Number 11, creativity. Ooh, you can use your creativity in so many different ways. Strategies, marketing, creating an edge, product, you know, events, oh, sales, contests, tr so many different ways you can use your creativity. Number 12, community. Community. You're part of a community. You're part of a community of other entrepreneurs. You speak a certain language that other entrepreneurs speak. You ever gone to a certain city or a certain country and they speak a different language and you kind of look at everybody like, man, I wish I spoke their language. When two entrepreneurs speak and other people are not entrepreneurs, everybody says, I spoke the language of entrepreneurship. Man, we speak a very nice, unique language. That's sexy, ain't it? It's sexy. When you become an entrepreneur, you know, it's part of a certain community that we speak a completely different language. Number 13, contribution. You are contributing to society. You are creating jobs. You are helping people advance in life. You are having to design better products that are better than the competitors so customers are happy. Contribution. You help nonprofit organizations. You help people that need help with contribution. It's very fulfilling when you're contributing. Number 14, control. You can control in many different ways. You can control in time. You can control in freedom, you can control in so many different ways that you'd have control over. Number 15, you know, as an entrepreneur, one of the reasons why you ought to be an entrepreneur is if you're a little bit weird, if you're watching this and you're a little bit weird, you're off, you're crazy, you know, you're, you're, maybe people have said you have ADD or ADHD or hypomanic or manic or whatever it is, you're a little bit off, you're weird, you're different than anybody else. Because, I mean, you got like three, four different personalities. This is like perfect for you, just so you, you realize in the world of business, that is a compliment. In the world of corporate, you're weird. In the world of business, you're a genius. Wow. Look at this mind. And you're kind of like, man, I feel like I felt like a fool. And I feel like I'm partying with a bunch of other weird people. And I'm an entrepreneur. I finally found a group I belong to. Um, next, dress attire. Uh, I had somebody that came to my office the other day. Uh, from an executive from a major insurance company says, oh, wow, so you're dressed casually today. I said, no, this is my attire. I love capitalism. I am an entrepreneur. This is how I dress. And every once in a while, I put a suit for a special occasion. And today doesn't happen to be a special occasion. Why? Because I'm an entrepreneur. This is how I like to dress. This is how I dress. Now my closet is stacked with a bunch of suits. I like to dress like this as an entrepreneur because I can dress like this as an entrepreneur. Now, as long as I'm professional and I know what I'm talking about, people still do business with me. Um, next, to have a voice. You can have a voice. You can have a voice in your community. You know, you can have a voice in your state. You can have a voice because you're talking in an area where you know what you're talking about. As an entrepreneur, you have a bigger platform. You have a bigger megaphone. You have a voice. Number 18, changing the world. There's something special about changing the world. Let me tell you something. Some people say, my gosh, you know, you really think you can change the world? Man, you, you, you're a dreamer. You sound like a six-year-old kid watching some of these fantasy movies. You can't change the world. This isn't Avatar the movie. Man, this ain't no cartoon. You ain't He-Man or Transformers or Spider-Man or, you know, Superman or Batman or all this other stuff. Well, let me tell you something. There are a lot of superheroes in the world, except they don't have a cape on. They're entrepreneurs. They're entrepreneurs, and they're changing the world in many different ways. Bill Gates is a hero. He changed the world. Steve Jobs changed the world. Bezos changed the world. Walton changed the world. Musk changed the world. Rockefeller changed the world. So many people changed the world as an entrepreneur. And not only with the jobs they created and the business they created, 
on the side given to charity. Maybe not everybody, but a lot of them give so much money to charity. Look at Buffett right now, the kind of money he wants to give charity. Look at what Gates wants to do. He wants to cure so many different viruses around the world because it's his mission now. He's worth 60, 70, 80 billion bucks changing the world, baby. It's such an incredible high to know they can change the world. Number 19, I, I, get, I got a message. I got a message earlier today. I don't know if it's like a current thing or whatever it is. People message me and say, Pat, what do you think about marijuana as a form of therapy? So what do you think about LSD or cocaine or ecstasy because it helps with creativity? How do I describe this in the nicest way possible? Because we have a lot of young people that follow me. Let me explain it to you this way. Why do people use drugs? People use drugs because they get what? Uh, either they want to escape their existing life that they don't like and using this drug takes me into a complete different state so I can escape the life that I don't like or I can use the idea of me when I smoke weed, I come up with some incredible ideas because I'm high and it's just, it taps into my creativity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, studies have shown that there's nothing wrong with smoking weed, always this argument that happens and okay, Weed is a natural thing to use. No problem. You want to make that case. Phenomenal. You want to make that case. And you're high when you smoke weed for 30 minutes or an hour or you do all these other things. Man, the greatest highs in life are natural highs that last 10 years. Can you imagine being high for 10 years? That's what it is when you're an entrepreneur. You're high for life. I'm li literally, I am high half the time. <laughs> I am always high. I'm currently high. You just don't know it. My eyes don't turn red. I don't start seeing like when you do shrooms and I'm seeing like butterflies and I see like a flying dinosaur, like a unicorn. Or what was that one movie? Never Ending Story with that white dog that looks like a little shih tzu. Except you remember Never Ending Story. Like, man. But literally when I tell you this, I am high like you wouldn't believe. I am high like you wouldn't believe. Except I don't use drugs. Naturally high. Somebody asked me today, they said, Pat, how come you don't drink coffee? Because, you know, I don't drink coffee. I said, it's very easy. The reason why I don't drink coffee is, why would a 20-year-old kid use Viagra? I said, wait a minute, I don't get it. I said, 20-year-old boy doesn't need Viagra. Maybe a Viagra you use in your 50s and your 60s, but at 20 years old to use Viagra, why am I going to drink coffee in my 20s and my 30s? My coffee should be exercise. I'll drink coffee in my 50s and my 60s. I don't need coffee right now. I don't need to have, because it's natural high, baby. I want to be naturally high. As an entrepreneur, you can have a lot of natural highs. 20, boredom, you ain't never going to be bored. You ain't never going to be bored. You got to be ready all the time because there's a lot of surprises. You don't have time to be bored as an entrepreneur. Number 21, age doesn't matter. You're 21, it's okay. You're 16, all good. You're, you're 38, fine. 73, totally fine. 82, cool. Age doesn't matter in the world of entrepreneurship. Let me explain to you why that's so important. I get so many questions, Pat, what do I do? I was a former executive for Sony, making 400 grand a year, and I was with them for 20 years. And now nobody wants to hire me. I'm 62 years old. Everywhere I go, I hear the famous thing, which is what? You are overqualified. Then I get comments from people, I'm 15 years old. My mom and dad don't believe I can do this and that, 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 all this other stuff. What do I do? World of entrepreneurship, your age doesn't matter. Your age doesn't matter at all. It's zero. It has nothing to do with your age as an entrepreneur. We did a video last week that said what? What was the title of the video? Uh, uh, the, what was the title of the video last week? It was what? The, the, uh, uh, what age does, age matter, as does age matter as an entrepreneur? If you haven't watched it, you can go watch it from last week. Does age matter as an entrepreneur? And age has nothing to do in the world of entrepreneurship. Number 22, a legacy. You know, legacy is powerful. When you die and this thing is done and your spirit goes wherever it's going to go with you, believe there's a heaven, reincarnation, nothing, you're done. You know, it replaces into an animal or plant. I don't know, whatever you think, whatever your belief system is on that. Um, there's nothing like your kids saying, you know, my mom, my dad left a legacy for us that we're going to be talking about forever to come. There's nothing like your grandkids saying, one day I want to be like you. You, I want to be like you. You know what that feels like? It's priceless. Legacy, baby. There's nothing like your community saying, man, this gal changed this entire city. This dude changed the entire world because of the legacy you left behind. You may have only lived eight years, 
but your legacy is going to live two, three thousand years. Your legacy doesn't have an age. Your legacy outlives your age of how many years you live. That's the legacy. Man, history books like this, why not chase that? That's entrepreneurship for you. Number 23, recognition. If you like recognition, competing, all that stuff, there's leaders, both in world, entrepreneurship, so you're going to be recognized quite a lot. Number 24, no degrees needed. I don't have a degree. I don't have a four-year degree. I don't have a two-year degree. And I just got accepted to a university. I'll be announcing to you guys here shortly on what took place. Stay tuned for it. That's going to shock everybody on what happened. I told myself, if I ever go to college or university, I will only go to one that accepts me. And I'll be announcing that here in the next few on which one it is. And you'll hear about that here shortly. But no degrees needed. I don't have a four-year. I don't have a two-year. I don't have any of that stuff. None of those things. You don't need a degree as an entrepreneur. 25, you develop unique muscles. Let me tell you what I mean by developing unique muscles. In the world of bodybuilding, if I grab a dumbbell and I curl, what am I building? Biceps. If I grab, you know, a, a curl bar and I do nose crushers, right? If I do, I'm developing triceps. If I grab a bench press and I'm doing bench press, I'm developing my chest. If I do shoulder press, I'm doing shoulders. If I do, you know, uh, traps, I'm doing, you know, for my, working on my traps. If I do squats, legs. No matter how much you work at all this muscle, there's certain muscles you can't work unless if you swim. There is no gym, there is no machine at the gym that works the muscles, that your body works if you swim. There are no machines at the gym that can develop your muscles that swimming can develop. What does this mean? You ever seen a, a, a swimmer's body? You ever seen Michael Phelps, what he looks like? The body forms in a completely different way because there's a muscle you develop when you swim that you can't hit with the weights, right? So you're saying, Pat, what does that have to do with anything? See, you have so many gifts and talents you don't ever know about. Most people will never see it unless if you become an entrepreneur. You will never know about it. When you become an entrepreneur, you all of a sudden say, I never knew I was good in this, this, this. But I can't write it and say, that's the strength and that's that gift. The only way you'll know about that is if you become an entrepreneur. Can you imagine living eight years and you die and never find out about those two, three gifts that you had that could make an impact in the world? Why would you want to sacrifice your capacity? Why would you want to sacrifice your capacity? Is it really worth it? I don't think so, but you become an entrepreneur, you'll find out about your unique gifts that you have. And last but not least, location. You can be an entrepreneur from any part of the world. It doesn't matter where you want to be. I used to live in LA, decided to move my office to Dallas, Texas. Now we're headquartered out of Dallas, Texas. It's all good. I don't have to be in LA. I can be out of here. I talked to, uh, 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 who was it, John Lee Dumas this morning when we were doing this podcast today. John Lee Dumas, entrepreneur on fire, and he told me he's out of where? Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. You know, he was telling me all these things on why he just moved to Puerto Rico in May, which is fascinating for him to move to Puerto Rico. He can do that. He's an entrepreneur. There's so many. Where do you want to live as an You want to live in New York City? You could do it. You want to live in Miami? You could do it. You want to run out of Austin? You want to run out of San Francisco, San Jose? Where do you want to run out of? You could do it as an entrepreneur because there's business to be done pretty much anywhere in the world. So with that being said, listen, people often ask me, they say, Pat, man. Do you always wear those shirts? Let me explain to you. I can't stand it when I wake up in the morning or the night before and have to pick out my, uh, my suit or my outfit. I, there's nothing like putting a suit on. I love putting a suit on. I mean, I love wearing suits. I love wearing suits. You couldn't force me to wear suits. I love wearing suits. There's something nice about wearing a nice suit that fits you like a glove that's tailored suit. That just It feels so good when you wear a nice suit, right? It's, it's fascinating when you wear a nice suit. But there's a uniform for entrepreneurs, and that is called I am an entrepreneur shirt. If you see me in the mall, you see me in the airport, you see me on a plane, you see me speaking, you see me anywhere, I'm wearing a shirt that says, I am an entrepreneur, which looks like this, Michelangelo. Let's just put a picture up there so they can see it. Or I wear a shirt that says, I love capitalism, entrepreneurship, free enterprise, capitalism. It's all the same thing. You can't be an entrepreneur and not think about capitalism. It's just, it's an oxymoron. It, it doesn't go to, it's the same exact thing. Entrepreneurship, capitalism, free enterprise is the same thing. If you don't like the word capitalism, maybe it's because the media has convinced you it's not a good thing. Capitalism is a great thing. Entrepreneurship is a great thing. Free enterprise is a great thing. They don't go without each other. They need all the, each other for it to be effective. So I love wearing these shirts that says, I love capitalism or enjoy capitalism or I'm an entrepreneur. And I'll walk around in the airport and so many, hundreds of people will come up to me and say, man, I'm an entrepreneur as well. Man, I'm an entrepreneur as well. So from the moment we launched the shirt, first time I wore it, and the next thing everybody said, how can I get the shirt? So then we had our guys design the shirt so other people can get it as well. I don't know what's the price point. I think it's like 22, 23, 24 bucks, all these different sizes. 
and people are ordering, people are ordering hundreds all over the world are, be, world are being ordered right now, and they're wearing it proudly. So here's what I'm going to do. You order your shirt. I'm an entrepreneur with the Value Tama logo. You're going to hear a lot about this logo here pretty soon. Or you ordered a sh uh, shirt. I love uh, capitalism or enjoy capitalism or quit quitting. Order your shirt. Put it on. Take a picture. Hashtag Value Tama on Instagram or put it on Facebook. Message us. We can do something special with those pictures that you take with the shirt. So make sure you take those pics. And by the way, they can order the shirts on uh, valuetainmentstore.com. I'm going to put the valuetainmentstore.com here. Mario, let's put an annotation link on here. And if you don't see the link here, you can click on the bottom description. If you don't see, just go type it on your URL, valuetainmentstore.com, and throw me my favorite pillow, baby. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do so. We are so close to 100,000. We are so close to 100,000, and so many of you are helping, contributing, sharing all this other stuff that you're doing. Thank you for everyone's help. I feel this channel has some of the most loyal, uh, dedicated, serious fans out there for entrepreneurship. I keep trying to bring content to you that's just not just about motivation. It's about inspiration. It's about how to and lessons where you can actually apply in your business and start getting results. And if you are somebody that watches this video, you're a proud entrepreneur, share this message with everybody else who's also an entrepreneur or invite other people who are thinking about entrepreneurship but they're afraid they need to watch a video like this. So with that being said, Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.